Hello everyone, I'm Jack from the Sun Founder Education team. Welcome back to the seventh lesson in this series of courses. In the previous lesson, I showed you how to set up an LED lighting circuit using the Wuno board. However, in actual practice, it can be challenging to build this circuit. According to the LED circuit design in the previous lesson, there is an LED, a resistor, three jumper wires, and a Wuno board. First, connect pin 5 of the Wuno board to the resistor. Then connect the resistor to the LED. Finally, connect the LED to the GND pin of the Wuno board. During the connection process, use jumper wires to connect to the NO board by simply inserting the wires into the corresponding pinholes. However, when connecting electronic components, it is necessary to wrap the components' pins which can be troublesome and the connection is not secure. Perhaps you might think to use a soldering iron to melt solder and weld the electronic component to the jumper wire together. This does make the connection more secure, but the soldered electronic component is no longer convenient to reuse. This is where we need to use a good helper to connect the circuit, the breadboard. Breadboards are specially designed and manufactured for soldering free experimentation in electronic circuits. A breadboard is a rectangular plastic board with many small holes, into which we can insert components such as LEDs, resistors, and jumper wires. Breadboards make it easy to insert and remove components. Although the holes on the breadboard appear to be independent of each other, they are actually connected internally by metal strips. Therefore, breadboards are very suitable for assembling and debugging electronic circuits and are also very suitable for learning to build circuits. Next, I'll take you through the breadboard. There are several sizes of breadboards that are most commonly used. The common sizes are full size, half size, and mini breadboards. The sizes are different, but the usage is the same. If you have a 3-in-1 learning kit, it will contain a full size breadboard and a mini breadboard. For the sake of demonstration, I will use a half-size breadboard to guide you through learning about breadboards. If you have a breadboard, please also take it out and observe together. When you pick up a breadboard, you will notice that there are letters and numbers on it, as well as colored lines. First, on the sides of the breadboard, you will see colored lines. The minus sign signifies the blue line, and the plus sign signifies the red line. These two columns are called bus strips and are typically used to provide power to circuits. The column marked with a minus sign is used to connect to the negative terminal of the power supply, and the column marked with a plus sign is used to connect to the positive terminal of the power supply. All the holes in each column of the bus strips are connected, but the columns are not interconnected. Looking back to the middle portion of the breadboard, the main areas to hold most of the electronic components are called terminal strips. On most breadboards, you will find numbers and letters in the middle portion. These numbers and letters are used to help you locate specific holes on the breadboard. If you have used an Excel spreadsheet before, you will notice that they are similar. I will now explain how to use these labels. At the top and bottom of this breadboard, you can see letters such as A, B, C that are arranged in order. Each letter corresponds to a column of the breadboard. For example, when I say the holes on column B, it means the holes in this whole column that is highlighted in the image. On the sides of the middle portion of the breadboard, you will see numbers such as 1, 5, 10, etc. These numbers are used to indicate the row numbers. For example, when I say the hole in row 6, I am referring to the entire row of holes that are highlighted in the image. We can use both the letter and the number to specify the location of a particular hole. For example, B6 refers to the hole at the intersection of column B and row 6. You can also call it 6B depending on your preference. As we mentioned before, although the holes on the breadboard appear to be independent of each other, they are actually interconnected internally by metal strips. For the terminal strip, the holes on the left and right sides of each row are one group each with the notch in the middle as the divider. For example, the holes A1 to E1 form one group and F1 to J1 form another group. Each group of holes is connected. 
This image shows which holes are connected together on a typical half-size breadboard which I have highlighted with yellow lines. Remember the bus strips we mentioned earlier, they are connected within each column. Now that we have learned the purpose and usage of a breadboard, let me demonstrate how to use a breadboard to build an LED circuit. First, we will again simulate the circuit connection using software to draw a breadboard diagram. Referring to the circuit diagram, let's begin building the LED circuit. First, use a wire to connect the NO board and the breadboard. Connect to Wuno board's pin 5 to the breadboard's hole A20. At this point, the Wuno board's pin 5 and the breadboard's holes A2 in row 20 are connected. We can now connect electronic components to these holes. Now connect one end of the resistor to one of the holes in the BCDE column of the breadboard's 20th row. Here, I have inserted the resistor into the B20 and B16 holes. Next, connect the LED to the breadboard as well. Insert the positive terminal of the LED into hole G16 and the negative terminal into hole H16. However, at this point, are the resistor and LED connected? Actually, no. As mentioned earlier, the areas on either side of the indentation are not connected. To connect them, we need to use a jumper wire. Use a wire to connect holes in F in column 16. Now the LED and resistor are connected. Finally, use a wire to connect the LED to the Wuno board. One end should be connected to hole F15 on the breadboard, and the other end should be connected to the Wuno board's GND pen. Now the LED circuit is complete. From the Wuno board's pin 5 to the resistor to the LED, and finally back to the Wuno board's GND pin, a closed loop is formed. When we set pin 5 to a high level, current will flow out from pin 5 through the resistor and LED and into the GND pin, creating a circuit loop and lighting up the LED. However, we can further simplify the circuit we have designed by reducing the use of jumper wires and making the circuit look neater overall, as well as making it easier to troubleshoot when problems arise. Change the position of the wire that connects to the GND pin to hole 815 and delete the wire connecting holes E and F. Then change the position of the LED so that the positive terminal is inserted into hole D16 and the negative terminal is inserted into hole D15. With the circuit connection design, we can now build the circuit in reality according to the breadboard diagram. Insert one end of a wire into the Wuno board's pin 5 hole and the other end into the breadboard's hole 820. When inserting the wire into the Wuno board or breadboard, make sure to push it all the way in to ensure a stable connection. Insert the wire until it cannot go any further. Then, connect one end of the 220 ohm resistor to hole B20 and the other end to hole B16. As before, try to tuck the wires of the resistor into the breadboard as much as possible. Resistors with values between 100 ohms and 300 ohms will also work. Continue by connecting the positive terminal, the longer leg of the LED, to hole D16, and the negative terminal, the shorter leg, to hole D15. Remember that the long leg is the positive terminal, and the short leg is the negative terminal, and don't mix them up. Finally, use a wire to connect hole 815 to the GND pin on the Wuno board. The LED circuit is now complete and we can proceed to program it to light up. First, connect the Wuno board to the computer and open the Arduino IDE. In the past, we've used the blink example code to make the onboard LED blink. In this lesson, let's write the code together from scratch to control the LED. Open the Arduino IDE, and it will automatically open the code you modified last time. Click File, then New Sketch to create a new sketch. Then save this sketch as 7LED2, or any other name of your choice. To start, we need to define pin 5 as an output. In the Setup function, enter pin mode 5 output, and add a comment, initialize pin 5 as output mode. Next, we'll make the LED light up. In the loop function, enter digital write 5 hi and add a comment, light up the LED. 
Upload the code and when it finishes uploading, you should see the LED turn on. What if we want to turn off the LED? I'm sure you can quickly think of it after a few lessons. Just set the output of pin 5 to low. Modify the code to replace high with low and upload the code again. When the code finishes uploading, you should see the LED turn off. Finally, modify the code to achieve the LED blinking effect. At this point, you can try to pause the video and try to write the rest of the code by your own understanding. Digital write 5 high. Light up the LED. Delay 1000. Wait for 1 second. Digital write 5 low. Turn off the LED. Delay 1000. Wait for 1 second. Remember to add comments after the code. If you feel that your code is a bit messy, you can use the auto format tool provided by the Arduino IDE. Right click your mouse and select Format Document, or press Ctrl and T simultaneously. You will see that the code has been formatted and becomes nice and neat. Now upload the code and see the result. You can see that the LED lights up for one second and then goes off for one second and shows a blinking effect. Congratulations on completing this project. Let's review what we did to build this LED circuit. First, we designed the LED circuit diagram based on the requirements and principles of electronics, determining the electronic components to be used and the way the circuit would be connected. In particular, we calculated the optimal resistance value for the resistor to be used. Next, based on the circuit diagram, we drew the breadboard diagram and designed the final actual connection method for the circuit. Finally, based on the breadboard diagram, we built the actual LED circuit and wrote the code to make the LED blink. This is a very practical circuit design method, and you can use this process to complete circuit construction for other projects in the future. In this lesson, we learned how to build an LED circuit. Now let's review the important points in building an LED circuit. One important tool we used in building an LED circuit is a breadboard. A breadboard is a board specifically designed and manufactured for non-soldered experiments with electronic circuits. It is a rectangular plastic board with many small holes. Components can be easily inserted and removed through these holes. Although the holes on the breadboard seem independent of each other, they are actually connected internally by metal strips. The following diagram shows the way these holes are connected. For the terminal strip, the holes on the left and right side of each row are each in a group with this notch in the middle as the divider. Each group of holes is connected. Remember the bus strips we mentioned earlier. They are connected internally within each column. That's it for this lesson. Don't forget to complete the post-lesson challenge. Here is a challenge for you. Modify the LED circuit and code created in this lesson to make the LED blink by using another digital pens. You can also try use a variable to store the pen number. See you at next video.